And we're back. Hi everybody and thanks for joining us. Today I thought I'd share a recipe that I've never made, but it looks really good and it looks really easy. And it also looks healthy. And I'm going to adjust it a little bit from the original recipe because that's how what I do. So um, this, let's get started. So the recipe is a steak fajita recipe. It calls for one onion sliced, one red bell pepper sliced, one green bell pepper sliced, and one yellow bell pepper sliced. That's hard. <laughs> there are good people going around slicing things. You should they support them. They slice them for us and put them in the store. Mm -hmm. You put those people out of work when you go around trying to do things yourself. <laughs> I have no idea how much if this adds up to all that sliceness, but Edie and I like lots of veggies in our stuff, so, so there you go. Let me just move that out a little bit. And then, the recipe actually calls for flank steak. The store didn't have flank steak, so I got top sirloin. That can't be wrong. Okay, that looks so, yummy. So it's on top of all peppers. So it's on top of all the peppers and onions. Then it calls for two tablespoons of taco seasoning. This is more than two tablespoons. But now the package is open. And we like taco seasoning. <laughs> At least we hope. No, we do. <laughs> so I'm just putting the whole thing in there. Then mixed garlic. It actually calls for four chopped cloves of garlic. Again, people are going around mincing it already. People chop things. Why should I? Put those people out of work if you're going around doing your own stuff. Mm hmm. And I have no idea how much four cloves of garlic are. So would there you be. go. So we're just going to play. We like garlic too. Oops. We prefer not to break jars. No, it happens. Sometimes people break their legs. <laughs> Speaking of which, mine is getting much better. Okay, let's do that. Then the the juice from one lime squeezes the lime. And it sucks it onto it too. All right. Then the last ingredient is a can of diced tomatoes. And this one has green chilies. Okay, the recipe says to cook it on high for four hours or low for eight hours. That seems like a no-brainer to me. It's going on high. It's 10.05. It's going on high for four hours. And I'll show you the end result when it's finished, but I also want to show you something else. Just hang on one Just second. Just wanted to give a shout out to our community. They are, this is the best little community ever. It really is, and no slight to anywhere else we've lived because we've lived among nice people, but these people, individually and as a whole, are some of the kindest, most caring people I've ever been around. Uh, we were really worried moving here that it would be intrusive because this community isn't very big. It's just really small, so our family has been here forever, and a lot of other families have been here, so everybody knows we each other. We live in our mom and dad's old home that yeah. they built in 1947, so, and it's on the land that that my dad bought from my great grandfather. Uh, the, the community, our garden didn't work out very well. Obviously, it didn't work out at all, actually. And and uh, but some of the community who live a little farther out, I guess those of us were in our location, got really messed up with the grasshoppers. But other people didn't have such a problem, and had a garden. And so they have shared with us, and not with us asking or even complaining. They just started calling and asking if we needed anything. And sure enough. We got quite a few things, squash and tomatoes, and um, our cousin brought us some pears and some apples and some peaches the other day, and um, then there's... We have, there's a couple in um, this town who we just adore. They are just such sweethearts, and, and um, they had an overabundance of produce from their garden, and, and uh, they, she would call me and say, 
would you like some zucchinis and summer squash? And I'd say, yes, I would, I'd love that. So now she says that when her husband brings in all of this produce from the garden, he lays it all over the kitchen, and I guess they've had just more than they can ever even think of eating in years. Um, he always says, okay, who should I take this to this time? And she always says, let me call my girls. That's us. We're her girls. Mm -hmm. That is so special to us. They are just, they're a wonderful couple. Yeah, and there's a guy in town who we just know. I mean, for some reason he likes us, and so he... he We'll ask and make sure that we have everything we need. He always tells us, I, you let me know. I'm not going to keep bugging you, but you let me know if you need anything because I hope you know you can call me. And then we were gone a, long, a lot in July, and Sandy, obviously, we told Dad that she broke her knee, and so, but we still were gone. Even with her broken knee, we had to go do craft fairs we'd already committed to. And, and uh, he kept coming to our house, I guess, because he told us later, he says, I have been worried about you and looking for you guys. I kept coming to your door and you don't answer. I wonder if there's something wrong. He didn't know Sandy had broken her leg. He never heard it. And sprained a ligament. Yeah, ligament. Ligament. Yeah, he hadn't heard that until we told him after, when he was tell, telling us this, but he said he just kept feeling like he needed to check on us. So kudos for him for his uh, listening to some sort of angel or whatever that even Divine though inspiration mm -hmm, whatever you want to call it he just felt like he needed to check on us so even though we weren't here to check on doesn't make it more valid or less valid that we that he, there was something that had happened and so we appreciate the people doing that so best community i've ever lived in in my life i just can't even imagine that i would go back to what I was in before, I, as far as, and not that that community was bad, I don't want to make it sound like it was bad, it's just that these people are just really it's caring. It's just a really close, tight-knit, small, rural community, and who knew that we could be farmers? Yeah, and you don't have to, you don't have to have anything in common with anybody, they just, they just come in and check on you, there's rich, there's poor, there's in between, and yet and nobody every, cares. And nobody cares. They just take care of each other. It, and elderly, we just had a 99-year-old lady who finally had to stop living by herself. Well, she had in-home care. She did for but the last what? Just a few months. Just though. a few months. She was living alone till that, and then she finally had to. She wanted to stay in her home till she died, but she finally had to go to a assisted living in the nearest community, so people still check on her too. And in fact, somebody was in a hospital about four hours away because they needed bigger medical attention and people would when they were driving through that area would go visit her that's just the way they are they check on each other okay back to the apple <laughs> okay there's a shout out for our community mm -hmm. but i also wanted to talk to you about our our garden or our apple trees this is actually from one of our apple trees what kind of an apple is it you ask i don't know yeah, we have no idea. We have about four trees, and they're all different. And they're all different, and they were from my mom and dad, and we have no idea what kind of apple and it they're is. They're strong little buggers, too, because we don't do anything to them. We barely water them, and they just I know, grow. and they grow anyway. So what I really wanted to show you was this little thing. This is so cool. I have no idea where we got it. I thought my son and daughter-in-law might have given it to us for a gift, but she told me, no, they they hadn't. So it was still in the box. It was down on a shelf in the basement. I can't imagine that our mom would have bought this and left it in a in the box. But if someone gave this to us, we evidently don't remember and we're old. Yeah. So, but anyway. thanks is real practical because we don't buy practical crap. We buy flip-flops. Yes, <laughs> we buy flip-flops and someday I'm going to have enough clothes or to match all of my flip-flops, some of which I've never worn because I don't have anything to match it. That's not your problem, or your fault, it's just your problem. No, nope, I just have trying. to take care of it. It's a quest. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to show you how this thing works. It is awesome. First, you clamp it down to the countertop and pull that back. And then put the apple on there. And then watch this. This is so cool. It peels it, and while it's peeling it, it slices it, and then when it gets all done, it's cored. Look at that. Came right Look off. at that. Can you see that? It's and all it's sliced. Is that so cool? We don't even spray these apples. No, I mean, we, we do, don't. We did nothing to these apples except 
we did we did water a couple of, a few times yeah, but the rain is this them. is mostly rain that has done made these things grow and we didn't have that much rain so these guys decided they were going to grow this year here let's taste it okay is it good better than store-bought mm. much more flavor mm. that's really good so anyway just want to share this little guy with you have any of you seen one of these? I had no idea you could do all this. Slice, peel, and core with one little contraption. That's very cool. It's not quite as good as flip-flops, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, flip-flops are the winner. Yeah. All right, so as soon as this is finished, which will be hmm, about three more hours, I'll be back and I'll show you the finished product. Product. It's been four hours, so I'm going to pull the sirloin, what is that top sirloin, I think, out of, the, out of the crock pot. Let's brush all this stuff off. Oh, it's nice and tender. Falling apart. Yep. And I am going to, the recipe says that one of the options is to put it under the broiler for a couple of minutes on each side. And I'm going to do that. So I just thought I'd let you see what it looks like. And then I'm going to put it in the broiler and I'll be right back. Okay, the meat came out of the broiler. I sliced it up. I cooked some veggies. I cooked, um, usually Edie and I have brown rice. We used to have brown rice with a lot of our meals, but we discovered something that we like. We really like this. Now it's not organic, but the only ingredients in it are cauliflower, green peas, yellow onions, carrots, and green onions. And it comes in different flavors. And it comes in different flavors. You can get sweet potato um, rice veggies. You can get butternut squash rice veggies. You can get rice veggies you can get broccoli rice veg I have a problem with my tongue evidently anyway this comes in different flavors so we decided that we were going to start doing that and just cut back on the brown rice so that's what we've been using and this is the end result how wonderful does that look oh my goodness look at that meat Yes, and, and then around the meat and underneath the meat are green peppers and all the onions and red and yellow peppers and boiled and carrots avocado. and avocado and riced cauliflower. So we're going to have this for lunch today and we're going to enjoy it. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching the video. If you try this recipe, please let us know. Um, in the comments, we've received a few new... new uh, followers in the comments below let us know who you are introduce yourselves tell us where you're from and uh, we'll be back another time